today, who's been the best player in the Toowoomba comp really for the last 10 years, who played for Waddles as well. So, as you say, Taylor, plenty of Queensland Rugby League history coming out of Toowoomba. Here is Illa Alu, the hunter skipper, to lead out the visitors in their predominantly white kit this afternoon. The PNG Hunters, based out of PNG for the first time, well, since 2020, although we only had one round in 2020, it's really, you could say, been just you know, a few years since they've been able to be at home. So it'll be very interesting to see how they perform this season uh, with the luxury of, of having a home again. I think that'll certainly make a lot of inroads for them being able to go back, see family and really connect back to their roots. So I think that'll uh, hugely boost the spirits of the Hunters this year and we'll see a rejuvenated side. And there was Ila Alu on screen. He really has been such an important leader in some tough times for the Hunters of late. And here they come, the return of the Clydesdales, the Western Clydesdales. Welcome back to Host Plus Cup footy. And you can hear the round of applause. The fans absolutely delighted. There's Jaden Corrigan, who's come across in the off-season. Former Norths player Corrigan. Now with the Western Clydesdales. He actually did some pre-season training with the Canterbury Bulldogs, the NRL side, in the off-season. It'll be the Hunters kicking off. The referee for this one, Nick Pelgrave, in his 136th cup game. Very experienced official in charge for this one. And we have liftoff. So the Clydesdales will bring it back for their first hit up in a long time. And it will be that man, Todd White, the former Ipswich Jet. And a penalty, I was about to say, a horrible start for the Clydesdales, but it's been a dream start for them. <laughs> yeah, what uh, what an experience. They're dropping the ball in that first tackle. I thought there might have been a little hand in it, but there wasn't much. It shows you how on top of things Nick Pelgrave really is, just signifying that in the first uh, play of the ball. So really good work there by Nick. And uh, the Clydesdales straight out of their own end. We get our first look at the new Western Clydesdales jersey, their home strip, the predominant uh, sky blue or baby blue, if you like. And over halfway here, big run this from Shonig, the skipper. He becomes Clydesdales Cup player number 228. The skipper, he gets the, the very next number, of course, being the captain. And that was the youngster, the 18-year-old Tims, the hooker with a run. Here they go, the Western Clydesdales on the attack. Mitch Ravel, one of the many debutantes of the Host Plus Cup in this game. And here's the halfback, Matt Duggan, another debutante. But as we alluded to, he's been just about the best player in Toowoomba Rugby League over the last 10 years as they go for the simple crash play. And what's the referee ruled here? Forward pass. Yeah, forward pass out of the hands of Drew Timms. You see, unfortunate, but the Clydesdales signifying their intent early on. Shonig, a great hit up down the middle of the park. And then the 18-year-old Drew Timms on debut here for the Clydesdales, recognising the quick ruck straight away and taking off. So really good vision and awareness from him. He's certainly one to watch this afternoon. They did well defensively, the Hunters. Their first test, an early one. And they finally get their first touch of their 2023 campaign. That was Solo Wane, the winger, coming in for an early hit up. And plenty of Clydesdales here in defence there, Shonig and Timms. The Hunters, their skipper, Ila Alu, on the 40 metre line. He's been captain inspiration in some trying years for the Hunters. Of course, new coach this year in Stanley Tepen. Papua New Guinea, they love their rugby league. The only country in the world where rugby league is their national sport. That's how much they love their rugby league. So they get to their kick on the last, the Hunters. And the Clydesdales to bring it back and well fielded. it. And they'll be 18 metres out from their own line on play number one. Now it's with Bessie Tamanga, who's with Talunga in that previous play. And this is Bessie Tamanga, who's spent the last couple of years with both the Falcons and the Tigers, looking to call Toowoomba home. So a little bit of tit for tat and early arm wrestle here. Another penalty, though. So that's 2 0 now, the penalty count to the Clydesdales. And that one appears to be against 5'8", Sakias Kamati. 
Yeah, those penalties inside the ruck, and it, it's just they're trying to slow the ruck down because they're losing the initial collision contest. Something that I wouldn't have predicted coming into this game is to see Papua New Guinea on the back end of the collisions. Um, that's what's happening, and they're trying to win the, the play the balls on those rucks late, giving away penalties. So piggyback straight down the field, and Clydesdale's looking very strong here. Oh, we've had two piggybacks in there, opening two sets, the Clydesdales. There's Drew Timms. And again, going very direct. That was Mitch Ravel there for the Clydesdales. Quick play the ball. Inside to the lock forward, Malatoa Nasiri. You can see he's only eight metres away. Centre field as Timms goes back towards the middle to the captain, Shonick. He played NRL for the Melbourne Storm. Former Sunshine Coast Falcon. And there's a low one. Did well there, Duggan away to Corrigan. Defence was up in his face, though. Led by Brandon Nima. This will be the last tackle. Mitchell Watson a dummy half as they come to Duggan. And a little dribbling kick in behind. There was an easy one, though, for the Hunters. And they did well to come away with possession. Yeah, standing defensive read there by Brendan Nemo in the back of that set. The Clydesdales had a really good ball movement set up on that left-hand side. Had the back to Corrigan there. And that was that hit, of course, Junior Rock. Just goes crash bang into Malatu and Asiri. Huge shot there from Junior Rock, who scored a hat-trick in the Melanesian Bowl last week when PNG defeated the Silk Tails from Fiji. And we're number eight for the Hunters today, Junior Rock. So they're on the 40 here, the Hunters. Inside. And they'll go relatively high through their 5'8 Kamadi on the last. It was Yakopa on the previous play. And this is pretty good field position here for the Clydesdales. Bring it back, Jerome Talunga. And he'll play it 41 out from his own line. Yeah, great couple of touches from Talunga. He's uh, accelerated onto the ball and got underneath that bomb. But testing in these conditions... He goes Mitchell Watson. He's a local man from the Warwick Cowboys getting an opportunity in the top grade this year. Had a big preseason, I hear, the number five for the Clydesdales, and they'll get another chance here with Shawnee playing a lot of football. Up in the Hunters' end at the moment, the Western Clydesdales. There's a kick in behind from McGrady, looking for the repeat set, but they didn't get the bounce. And a sigh of relief, I'm sure, from Coach Stanley Tepp, and they've... Uh, been under all sorts of pressure early the hunters but they seem to be uh, accounting for themselves well early on yeah they were a little bit uh, lucky there a few of those contacts here's Darren Shawnee getting on his back and driven by the 5-8 and Sakoas Kamati but yeah Corey McGrady just a little too much uh, squats in the gym for that last kick and, and ran dead but there are only a few little adjustments of applying some real pressure to the hunters they got out of jail a couple of times but they'll need to uh, correct themselves shortly and, and start, stop giving away those penalties. He's from Toowoomba, Corey McGrady. The Hunters with it. Alu, 41 out. The halfback now, Mavoko. As they spread it wide here, the Hunters. Nima, strong tackle on him. Made there by Cole Waka. And Mavoko via Tenza. And here is Junior Rock on the last play, 25 out, the Hunters. So we'll get a look at their attack on the last. And it's a good kick. It was a contest as well. And a penalty to the Hunters this time. So they get their first penalty in a great position on the field. And they should get another shot here at the Clydesdales. Yeah, this is exactly what the Hunters needed, just to get down in the other end and start planting their flag deep in the Clydesdales territory. Blake Lenahan. Just going to put some pressure on Jamie Mavoko and unfortunately had a lazy arm that went a little too high. Intent was there, but he needs to complete the tackle properly. So they take the tap, the Hunters. They're going for it. In these conditions, every point ever so valuable. That was Ila Alu, only five out. A dummy from the 5 8. Here comes the opening try. Sakaias Kamati. And Kamati slices through the Clydesdale's defence and PNG strike first. Beautiful work here by the Hunters. They got their opportunity deep in the Clydesdale's territory and they make them pay straight away. Goes to the line there, Sakaius Kamati. He was one to look out for in my catch-up with Tommy Butterfield during the week. He said this young player is exciting. 
Very crafty football player. Strong, yeah. quick. Joins the dummy with an excellent lead run and straight through the gap. Just caught a couple of the Clivesdales looking too wide too early. And after absorbing all of that pressure, the Hunters hit the lead with a great try. rolling ones, they just set where they set, but we get... So the Hunters, they withstood a lot of pressure and they come away with the opening try. They only needed yeah. one chance and they took it with open arms. Sakaias Kamadi, who was the 5-8th of the year in last season's domestic rugby league competition in PNG, the Digicel Cup. And Kamati slicing through some very weak defence from the Clydesdales. Here's Jamie Mavoko with the kicking duties today. His father actually played for the Port Moresby Vipers, who were once in the formerly named Queensland Cup. He adds the extras thanks to Containers for Change. Convert your containers into cash donations for your club by visiting containersforchange.com.au. Yeah, we'll have a look at the replay again here. As he goes to the line, I think it's Darren Shonick. Just pushed a little too far to the outside not quite protecting his inside shoulder tricky kickoff and they've, they've dropped it can you believe it the hunters so the Clydesdales an opportunity to return serve straight away let's take a look at our Shell V Power player to watch today Shell V Power player to watch Seconds bind together. And it is right the number one from the Western right Clydesdales, Jaden Corrigan. Right He's a real game breaker. Break. As we said, spent some time with the Canterbury Bulldogs in the preseason. Need to get to the game, then fill up with Shell V Power. 98. The premium fuel designed to deliver unbeatable protection. Fuel the feeling with Shell V Power. Details online. And the Clydesdales attacking. This is Mitch Ravel. Another one from Toowoomba also. Spent some time in the NRL Panthers system. There's a brothers junior in the local comp. And only 10 away now. Face ball dropped by the halfback. Well, of all players, it is slippery out there. There's Matt Duggan. And he just couldn't hold that one, Taylor. And if he does catch it, well, the Hunters were in a lot of trouble. They were in a lot of trouble. He actually had Jaden Corrigan sneaking up on his inside as well, going, which caused the original opportunity for him to duck through the line if he got his hands on that one. But I guess that's really testament to the conditions they have out there in Toowoomba, the amount of drop ball we're seeing. There'd be a lot of sweat, a lot of water, the humidity's there, and these sorts of things can happen. But he had good support on the outside in Waka. So who knows what would have happened if he held onto that one. Well, the defender came in from the Hunters who arguably forced the error, so it was mm. a good defence. But if Duncan Please. catches that with the defender coming in, he did have Waka unmarked on the outside. That's Brendan Nemo again putting pressure Wait. on Wait. Matt Duggan there to catch that ball. So another good defensive read by Nemo on the right edge. Siki Condon, 30 out, and now they go over the 40 through Solo Wane, one of the more experienced hunters. Alu met in a solid tackle led by Malatua Naziri. The lock for the Clydesdales, 13 on 13. A set restart here for PNG. Well, they're one from one, attacking the Clydesdales line. Can they make it two from two towards the back end of this set? The hunters, that was Julius Yakopa. And now Junior Rop. Square. Wait, go. Two. 23 away. That's Alu at first receiver. Right. Comes out the back to the try scorer. Kamadi and now the fullback. Mariah, Mariah with a miracle pass on the outside to Benji Cott. And the Hunters have their second. They are on fire, PNG. How creative is this skill set that some of these Papua New Guinean players possess? In particular here, Maria Maria, he was the player of the year for the Digicel Cup last year. And now you can start to see why. Draws in two defenders, has McGrady and Tamanga holding on to him. Still manages to get his right arm free. 
Have a look at the skill that goes into plays like this. No look, round the corner, and just so instinctual from Benji Cott to realise his player has that potential and continue to push through the gap. Just an exciting brand of rugby league, and here come the Hunters. Host Plus is a top-performing industry super fund run only to benefit our members. An industry fund that puts you first? That's a plus. So Benji Cott with the Hunters second, and they've scored on both occasions being up that end of the field. Clydesdales not defending. And the Hunters two from two. The Clydesdales have had a couple of chances themselves. So 10-0 kick to come here for the Hunters. And there is the try scorer, Benji Cott, his third year with PNG. He's had a big preseason and uh, really was assisted there by Morea. Morea, brilliant pass and well taken by Cott in these conditions as well. Yeah, that's one thing you can never count out with the Hunters players. Their hands are always pretty crisp. And Jamie Mavoko. Nine in from touch. No goal. And he's pushed that his way to the left. So no extras, but the score remains 10-0 in favour of the PNG Hunters. Let's take this opportunity to head downstairs to our sideline eye, of course, Adam Jackson. You're on the ball. Yeah, good afternoon, boys. Just a bit of an update on the conditions. We've had hey, some thunder and lightning the past few minutes here. Yeah, so, shout out to our hardworking camera crew. They're doing an excellent job with the pitches. What you're seeing on the broadcast is a lot better than reality down here on the sideline. It's actually quite dark and we've got the lights on. So, I can't remember the last time we've had a host plus game at 2 o'clock and we've got the lights on. A little bit of wind around, too, starting to swell. So, we'll have to wait to see who that favours for the later stages of this game. Yeah, thanks, Adam. Uh, as I mentioned in the pregame, I really believe this does benefit the Hunters. They do play in conditions like this. They are used to slipperier sorts of conditions, and you can tell their ball handling involved in that last try. It was almost second nature to these athletes. That's a mistake here out of the Hunters. Coming out of their own end, that's not going to help their cause. And the second time they've happened after points, Drew. Yeah, Apple Capenius, who returns to the Hunters. He had a stint with the winner Manly Seagulls last year. Back with the Hunters in 2023. Just a little knock on there by Capenius. And that's, uh, well, they've scored twice the Hunters, and on both occasions they haven't completed afterwards. Mm. The Clydesdales, as we mentioned, they haven't taken those opportunities. Let's see if they can do it on this occasion. They'll start the set about 38 metres out from the Hunters' try line with Waka, the Kiwi. And there's a strong run. Again, the lock forward, Nafasa, Malatoa, Nasseri. And the Western Clydesdales right. Go, back three. in the competition yep. again after an absence going back to 2006. Did well to hang on to that one. Did Ravel. Only 10 away. Tims. Duggan. And he finds his lock forward who beats the first but then taken down six metres away. Last tackle. Not late on a kicker. So Duggan, what's he going to do? He goes in behind, bouncing ball. It's going everywhere. We've got a penalty to the Hunters, though. Best. 10 metres, best. Looks like inside the 10, it might have been the centre three-quarter, Bessie Tamanga. Yeah, it looks like Bessie may have just jumped a little too early there. It was a well-weighted kick by Matt Duggan. A few Hunters players going scattering and... There may have been an opportunity for four points, but as we can see here, Tormunga just a little bit offside. He wasn't a perfect position, though, wasn't he? Another chance and opportunity for the Clydesdales goes begging. We'll join the hunt now by the online store. Grab the latest club apparel, training gear, jerseys, supporter tees, singlets and more. All available now via the website, www.pnghunters.com forward slash store. That's for all your hunters online gear or your uh, club apparel jerseys and everything head to pnghunters.com forward slash store geez there's been some clashes in the middle of the park mate there's been some really good one-on-one -on -one collisions shawnee just involved with one 
Malatoa and Nasiri as well. The juggle there, that certainly has. And the kick under pressure. Well taken by Corrigan at the back. And Corrigan! Straight away! Threatening to slice through there. Good run from him. Yep, he's running. And here is the tall winger in Mitchell Watson. There's Corrigan. And former North player. Was he at the Jets last year? I think he might have some time there as well. I'm thinking of someone else. I think he might have been thinking of someone else because he was involved with the North Devils the last couple of seasons as well, Jaden Corrigan. Certainly spent some time with North. Spent some time with the Dolphins as well. Yes. With the Warriors training trial contract there. So... He's well, well seasoned veteran. There's Malato and Asiri getting a well earned rest. The Clydesdales. Good set from them. Here's the interchange player in Take Mokaha who's on. And well, that was a pass under pressure. I'm not sure why he popped that Waka, unless he was well, he's claiming he was tackled without the ball there, Waka, but when the pass was thrown, he had a man all over him. We'll get a decision. He's already wrapped up and put on the ground before the ball was thrown there, Drury. You're absolutely right. We can see here on the replay. I guess there is a, a small case to be made there. I think it Tackled without the ball. Might even be a Clydesdale scrum here. Knock on against the Hunters there. Mm. Let's see who gets the feed. They certainly had a case there, the Clydesdales, to say that the play was tackled without the footy. Second, one together. Yes, now it'll be a Clydesdale's feed here. So another opportunity for the Clydesdales and 20 minutes in. I'd like to see them at least get in a repeat set if they can't convert this one into points. Well, they've gone low with both their kicks, haven't they? The Clydesdales haven't gone to the air against the Hunter's side. And here's Shoddick, the skipper. Pumping those legs. Tim's a dummy half. Comes out here to Duggan as they line up. And Duggan was met in a heavy tackle. The knock-on is going to be the call here. Again, bruising defence from the Hunters. And Duggan is still down. Yeah, and who else but Junior Roth has been involved in plenty of big collisions for the Hunters today. Excellent line speed and pressure. And, geez, Duggan seems to be experiencing a little bit of pain here. Yeah. But Junior Rop. Another head. An absolute axe, you can see. Yeah, there's a clash of heads involved in that one. Yeah, head clash there. I suspect he'll be off for a HIA. Yes, there'll, there'll be a HIA. A mandatory timeout period. Really good to see the game taking that seriously. A little bit of claret coming out of the nose there as well. It might have just collected Matt Duggan on the bridge of his nose there. It does. And... Uh, there might be a, a trip to the doctors scheduled for tomorrow for Mr. Duggan. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back right after this. Cheers to the East Tigers for their amazing fundraising. And cheers to Daphne and Frank, whose empties fund their grandkids' piggy bank. Cheers to the Changemakers. So there is Matt Duggan receiving some attention. Let's hope he's okay. And Taylor Brown, this is likely or it will cause a reshuffle potentially. Um, Duggan, I'd be surprised if he stays on the field. Yeah, as would I. I would presume there would be a little bit of a concussion protocol given the fact that it is an injury on the head. And you can see there is a little bit of uh, the red stuff pouring out from his nose. So I'm very interested to see who they do look for coming off the bench here. Probably Hugh Sedger folding into that hooking role. Maybe Drew Timms can go into the halves, but not an ideal scenario for the Clydesdales. Oh, hang on. Oh, look out. Here he is, Melino Finayanganofo. And, uh, geez, got some huge wraps on him. And, and, and just going back to that, Taylor, they don't have a half on their bench. You're absolutely right. Hugh Sedger can play hooker. He also plays edge and, and lock outside foot, outside but Hugh said you could play hooker yeah, if Tim's had to go in the halves the other thing we might see is maybe Jaden Corrigan moving to the halves but interesting to see it looks like well a forwards come on the field not Sedja so it'd be interesting to see who is in the halves well looking here and seeing Fernando Nafoa and he is out in the centers 
So the big man who uh, has played a lot of prop forward, affectionately nicknamed the Tongan Gorilla. Can, after. can play centre as well, Taylor. Can play centre, so he's going to be used in this game by Jason Alchin out in the centres. I was hoping he was going to slip into the halfback role there, mate. That's every front row's dream. <laughs> So the Hunters with it, and they get a late pass away, which goes out of play. And just going back to the Clyde Styles, uh, I wonder if that means that Cole Waka or, or Tamang has moved into the halves. We'll, we'll get Adam Jackson to keep an eye on that. I'm yeah. sure he'll uh, keep us up to speed on Matt Duggan as well. He, he barely misses a trick, does Adam Jackson? <laughs> well, in the meantime, we'll have the just a little air handling area here by the Hunters. Benji Cott. He's already got a try to his name on that left-hand edge. Tries to get an offload away. Here is Fene Anganofo. Host Plus Cup debut today. Lost 15 kilos in the off-season. They get a set restart. So the Clyde Stars, if you just join us without their starting half, Matt Duggan, and still searching for their first points. They haven't been short on opportunities. Can they convert this time? Again, Kapinius in a strong tackle for PNG. And the Clydesdales. This time it's Shonig the skipper, 18 metres away. And now Corey McGrady goes through the hands of Cole Walker. It does look like he's playing half, a uh, 5 8 rather. And can he take this? Watson trouble here. He lost his footing. Kicked ahead from Wano, who's got plenty of speed. And Cole Walker to the rescue. And surely the advantage was played for the knock on up there. And Taylor. Cole Walker, I, I reckon I'm going to call it, I think he's slotted into that 5'8 role. Yeah, he has. He's slotted straight into the 5'8 role and may have been a little bit of mistiming in communication with his first attacking set. Unfortunately, the ball goes begging and that's the sort of football that Papua New Guinea can do. If a ball's on the ground, they often are the first ones to explode onto it and can turn those defensive opportunities straight into points. Jeez, I thought for all money there, solo 1-8 would have raced away but the bounce of the rugby league football can be oh so cruel can't it Drury here's Corey McGrady they go high this time well timed challenge there from Tamanga looking just to build a little bit of pressure here the Clyde Styles. let's go down to the sideline here is Adam Jackson yeah you guys are right in your assessment Wack has moved into the 5-8 um, position on the left hand side here the problem with Duggan is that his nose is bleeding profusely there trying to stop it on the sideline so it looks as though he might be strapped up in that nose region and come back out a bit later on thank you adam well sounds like he might return duggan a little later on as we see a penalty and this time to the hunters how do you fix a nosebleed like that and throw it just lots of cotton buds and a bit of strapping tape on the bridge you reckon that can't be comfortable be mouth breathing for the next 60. Yeah, it's a tough one it wouldn't be yes, pleasant for him. Take a look here at the replay. Thanks to Mackers. Get our front foot to the line here. Front foot. So here come the Hunters. They lead 10 0 over the Western Clydesdales. Just short of the 25 minute mark. Was Brandon Nima and now on the field Dick Valentine Dick. Richard. All the way. Front foot. Go, two. Richard on loan from the Central Ooh. Queensland campus making his Hunters debut. And is that a forward pass just when Tanabi and the Three Hunters were looking down. likely? Yeah, it's been called back here as a forward pass. But they just on those short balls, especially on that, that left hand edge, every time Sakaius Kamati has the ball in hand and attacking the line. Something seems to be happening around him. He had the options on the inside. As we look here on the Macca's replay, option on the inside chooses to go to Sherwin Tanabe, or Tanabe, sorry. And I'll tell you what, if you got that pass away a little bit earlier, it would have been a quick play the ball. You would have seen Wesa Tanza taking off. Here comes the big fella. Can he stay in the field of play? Did well there. Fene Anganofo. One, and... And uh, he can play center as we give a shout out to the Western Clydesdales match day sponsor, Hutchinson Builders. Hutchinson Builders, local people proudly building locally for over 30 years and now building the future of rugby league in the Toowoomba region. Hutchinson Builders supporting the Western Clydesdales. 
Played there by Mitch Ravel into Hunter's territory. And a little half opening up the middle that time around. And that was Mokaha, the interchange forward. Last tackle now. Now come the way of McGrady. He goes high again. It's not a bad kick. Oh, he overran it, the winger. Talanga. You don't see that very often. Just didn't quite time his run. Where do you want it? Yeah, I think it may have also been shanked off the boot of McGrady. He's, he's not very happy with himself in the way it came off. By all means, it still stayed in the field of play, and Torlunga had every opportunity if he held his line a little bit longer on the outside. But as you look at the Macca's replay, I think he just, just shanks on the on the right-hand side of his boot, causing a few issues there. So it was good pressure by the Hunters as well, which may have contributed. I just thought that... Uh, the winger would have been able to adjust, mm. but uh, of course it is slippery out there. I don't mind that tactic from the Clydesdales, Taylor, going high. I think the Hunters are, are more used to the game of the grubber kicks. They're not the tallest team, the Hunters. Yeah, well, if you look at Jerome Tolunga and Mitchell Watson, they're both quite tall, athletic characters on the wings there. They're perfect targets for McGrady to get to, so they might make that adjustment back into the half or maybe they've stopped doing that because of the wet i'm not sure but it certainly seems to be what one of their strengths would be Capinius, a few meters short of halfway and a high kick from kamati a tough one. Oh boy how on earth did he hang on to that Jaden corrigan i thought he was going to knock that on and now he gets the penalty and a few words said there with the Hunter's Siki Condon, but uh, how on earth did he hang on to that? I have no idea how he kept on to that one, Drury. That was a special take. Again, the Macca's replay shows. Oh, I thought it was going to slip out the top there, but he just writhed his body to stay underneath the football at all times. It's, uh, yeah, that was special there by Jaden Corrigan, and he makes that extra effort, then gets a penalty. Now the Clydesdales are up the field. Here they come. So here come the Clyde Stars with Bessie Tamanga. Up together! Square! Wait! Another one. They're trained with the Bulldogs in the preseason. That's a forward pass. Of course, Jason Alchin won a comp with Canterbury. And uh, he also played for the West Magpies and St. George, but he won a comp with Canterbury. He's got some connections there. He's able to tee up some preseason training for some of his players. Mm. I believe Jason Alchin was appointed by the Bulldogs when they created that partnership with the Clydesdales for their re-emergence in the Host Plus Cup. So some very strong Canterbury connections here in this region and what a nursery it will probably provide for the Bulldogs. Just another vein of talent. Cole, around this side, right in. Thanks, Jaden. Jaden, two hands, face square. Ball, stay there, Cole. Ball. There's Brendan Nema. And the Hunters from the set restart. Just got a hand to it there, did Mitchell Watson. Where do you want the scrum? Jeez, he had to because Maria Maria, when he runs with the football in two hands like that, he just had the Clydesdales guessing and he didn't touch that one, Mitchell Watson. I dare say he would have been seeing a runaway try. You can just see the way he questions the defence. He had options on his outside there as well. Lost right in. It's very much a new look Hunter's side in season 2023. They've lost a wealth of experience in the off-season. Kevin Apo went to the Bradford Bulls. Um, Watavo Puara Jr., who was their most experienced, he left. Emmanuel Wayne and also Samuel Yegip, who's joined the Central Queensland Capra. So very new Hunter's side, and, and they've certainly recruited a lot of talent that that did excel in that Digicel Cup in PNG in 2022. They got the 5 8 the year, they got the player of the year, they got the winning captain. So they've drawn a lot uh, from that competition. And they're playing roster this year in the Host Plus Cup. For Sherwin Tanabi looking for their third here, the Hunters. Little offload away there from Valentine Richard. Chance here in the corner as the Clydesdales converge. It was solo one eight. There was a wall of Clydesdale's defenders. There's a dummy there from Brendan Nema who ran straight into that wall. And they're hanging on for dear life at the moment, the Clydesdales. Here's the half. Little dummy goes himself and Jamie Mavoko. And this will be the last tackle. 
Judah Rimbu is on the 14. And one on one, little flick pass out the back to Neiman. They're in again, PNG. All too easy at the moment. And Neiman scores. Try time. Well, again, Drury, it's this unmatched skill that they managed to foster and grow and nurture up in Papua New Guinea. You can see the late switch by Maria Maria. Ball finds its way to Julius Jacopa. And then just a no-look right-handed flick. Brendan Neymar jogging on the spot this time to claim the four points. But again, you can put it down to the skill of Julius Jacopa on the right edge for the Hunters. You mentioned there, Drury, you touched on the Hunters. They've had this very high turnover of players for this year. I think if you're in the Clydesdales uniform, you want to look at how to re-enter the competition. You do exactly how the Hunters have. Coming back into the competition in 2014, winning the competition in 2017, and fostering those juniors to come through the ranks. At Super Cheap Auto, whether you drive an old car, new car, new old car, two-wheel car, or a no-wheel car, whoever you are, whatever you drive, we'll help you make it super. So Brandon Neymar, the try scorer, his wife actually plays for the women's national side, the PNG Orchids. Yeah, mate. And just if you Brandon like you're Neymar. Brandon yourself. Just a few, a few played in that right uh, PM's side, 13 play, side include some positive last year as well. Played just go the, the Australian team, and he's been one of the mainstays in this Hunters so lineup the last few seasons. Brandon Nima scores their third, and here is Mavoko. And can it come around? It just stays right, so he's one from three, but the Hunters are leading 14 points to nil in what was supposed to be. Well, it is a, uh, a moment to be celebrated, the homecoming of the Clydesdales, but uh, certainly not the start they would have liked. The Hunters, some brilliant play close to the line, Taylor, and they're over their third. Absolutely, and it's so hard to defend against a Hunters side when they're throwing those passes and getting those tries. So it's uh, it's been a tough outing for the Clydesdales, but also some beautiful and crafty handiwork from the Hunters. Paul Leighton on the sideline, the former Kummel, and... It's almost three knock-ons in a row after their tries there from the Hunters. They'll take the opportunity to head downstairs again to our man, Adam Jackson. Yeah, boys, I don't want to jinx it too much, but it feels like the rain is slowly starting to ease. So maybe after a half-time, the second half, we get uh, some footy free of the rain. But, yeah, definitely having an effect on the handling conditions for the Clydesdales. Probably pushing a few too many passes early on, which Jason Elchin won't be uh, too happy with. You mentioned the Bulldogs, Link. He actually told me pre-game, Elchin, that the head honcho himself, Phil Gould, has been up here to Toowoomba about four or five times. So really trying to strengthen that Bulldogs partnership from the get-go. Thank you, Admiral. That's interesting, uh, isn't it? Uh, new look, Phil Gould. He's lost some weight, hasn't he? He looks outstanding. Maybe it's all those Gould. trips to Toowoomba. He looks great. I don't know what it is. The extra humidity there, a bit more sweat. Get him on the exercise bike down at training. I think he's, he's looking great. Well, if it's the tummy tuck, he sure hasn't let on, has he? Well, he <laughs> needs to uh, let me know if it is. I need the surgeon's name. <laughs> I'm going down that path myself. <laughs> I've got you there, didn't I, Drury? <laughs> The Clydesdales, 30 out here. Gee, they'd love some points before the break. They've had just as many opportunities as the Hunters. Here comes the kick early from McGrady, looking for that 40-20. Didn't have the angle, but still got the distance. And so an early kick there. And the Hunters bring it back, 21 out from their own line. He's solo one PNG Kummel. Hold, hold. Of course, Stanley Tepen, the Kummel's coach, Taylor. And interesting to see how that plays out this season, having the national coach coaching the Hunters. You'd only think that would only galvanise the team. And 
give them, uh, I suppose, that a little bit of extra patriotic spirit, you would think. Mm. Stand up. Well, we saw the exact same situation with Michael, Michael Maron when they first come to the competition. He was also the national coach while being the Hunters coach, and they had a very successive period when they come into the competition, culminating into that 2017 grand final win for the Hunters. So I think, it can. you're right, it's only going to galvanise and strengthen rugby league in Papua New Guinea. Steer the ship all in the one direction. So that kick going dead. This will be a seven-tackle set for the Clydesdale. So this perhaps their best opportunity before the break for points. With that extra tackle. Can they get a crack at the end of this set or perhaps even a repeat set? There's still time. At the moment, the Hunters just muscling up in the forwards. That's Corrigan, five short of halfway. And a penalty here it was with Nayana Oldham for the Clydesdales. It's going to go against the Hunters, this one. They've been uh, getting a few opportunities to come down this end. We see the Maccas replay there just a little bit high on the defence. Just collected Oldham around the chin, but... The Clydesdales really need to start recognising that they're being provided these opportunities and not converting them into either points or just a really good field positioning at the end of the battle. So hoping the Clydesdales can correct that in the next couple of minutes coming into half time because wouldn't that lift their spirits if they finally get on the board? Ten meters, 11, 11. So the Clydesdales with Mokaha. Out of side play, McGrady, short pass, no look. Wait. Three, Ball three, almost three, coming loose. Mitch Ravel did well to hang on now. That one was high for McGrady as they come the other way. And again, the Hunters 10, 17, in the faces of the Clydesdales. Tackled there by Valentine Richard. And now towards the left edge. Like Lenahan. Last tackle. You said you're is playing hook here at the moment. Little kick ricocheted and played out by the Hunters. Can they get the footy here, the Clydesdales? They do. McGrady, chance here. They got support on the outside and Bessie Tamanga. He has the Western Clydesdales first try back in the Host Plus Cup. And what a timely try it is. Outstanding work here by the Clydesdales. They get their names on the score sheet through Bessie Tamanga. The slide into the corner, followed by the left right. Good night. He's excited, the big fella, and as he should be. They've been threatening all afternoon down that edge. They've had Mitch Ravel running some great lines and making some inroads. The ball finally gets to their strike center. One of their big signings spends the preseason with the Bulldogs, and he makes his mark on the game straight away. A good little blueprint there for the Clydesdales to follow into the second half. And yeah, we'll take a look at this replay again. And uh, you can see there it was uh, like a pinball machine there. But it was played at. It was just a matter of whether they could come up with the footy. They did, the Clydesdales. Presented an opportunity on the outside there for Bessie Tamanga, who did the rest. Yeah, well, Matt Duggan in jersey number 20 comes back onto the field. And his first touch produces a try through that pinball effect, as you said. So immediate effect for Matt Duggan back into the game. And this will take us through to the half. And you know how important points can be, especially for the scoring side coming into the halftime break, but how deflating it also can be for the defensive side, the Hunters. So here is Bessie Tamanga, about a 30 centimetre ruler from the sideline. Tamanga. Right foot strikes it across the face. It'll stay there. So 14 points to four. And the Clydesdales do get some points before the break. It'll give coach Jason Alchin something to talk to the troops about coming into this break. A little bit of light at the end of this half. Show them points are available when they stick down that end. Hold the football. Trust the process. But that's all will be coming up for the next half. 
Well, that is half time here at Clive Berghofer Stadium. And the visitors at this point in time spoiling the party. They lead by 10 at the break, 14 points to four in wet conditions here in Toowoomba. So 14 points to four. And Taylor, what impressed you most from the Hunters in that first 40 minutes? I think there was a real consistent effort from the Hunters to attack the halves of the Clivesdales in their end and put some pressure on them. You've seen pressure causing McGrady to spray a few kicks. That pressure on Matt Duggan, of course, causing that what looked like almost a broken nose with the amount of claret coming out of him. So I think they've been really strong in defence in their own end, the Hunters. And he is back on the field in jumper number 20, Duggan. So that's good news for them as we take a look at some of uh, the action from the opening half we are going to take a break now on the other side of this break it'll be Macca's halftime you're watching the 2023 host plus cup season They always bring this physicality. They always bring this energy. And at the moment, that's got them leading the battle on the scoreboard. Who's winning the battle of the forwards? I think you can safely say the Hunters at the moment are getting over the top. They had a little bit of trouble early on, of course. We saw a few of those penalties given away, just trying to win back the rough after losing the initial collision. But they've corrected that error from the first five minutes, and it certainly led them to have a commanding lead coming into the second half and give an opportunity for blokes like that man there, Maria Maria, to create a little bit of magic off the back of it. Interestingly, uh, Adam's thoughts get Corrigan more involved in this second half. Uh, Taylor, what do you think the Clydesdales need to improve on to get back into this game? I absolutely agree. I think we saw uh, Tormunga at the end of that half get a try in the right-hand corner. And other than that, we haven't seen the ball too much in his hands either. He's, of course, had that NRL Bulldogs train and trial throughout the off-season. So has Corrigan. You've got these guys that are very skillful, very quick, very powerful on the outside of your back line. Get the ball to them. Let them have a little bit of fun and see what they can produce. Now Corey McGrady getting ready to restart us for the second half. It'll be the Hunters with possession first. They lead 14 points to four. And here we go for the second 40 minutes. First try ever so crucial. Huge run back. And uh, that is Valentine Richard, who has been one of their best since coming on. Very physical play from him and the Hunters off the back of winning the ruck battle in that first half lead by 10. They certainly had plenty of opportunities themselves. The Clydesdales just haven't been able to convert. Mokahar over the top there in the tackle and the Hunters short side already over halfway. Sherwin Tanabi, who trained with the Dolphins in the preseason. They come back towards the middle. Judah Rimbu might be playing in the halves. The jumper in jumper 14. He's a real talent for the Hunters. Played by Capinius on the last. The halfback Mavoko goes high. And the Clydesdales. Very cautiously taken, but well taken in the end. And tackled there is Mitch Watson. Great opening set there by the Hunters. A little bit of variety going to Tanabe, Tanabe on the left-hand edge. Just some early ball, moving the Clydesdales around, and then a good high kick with plenty of chase. So really setting the intentions there, the Hunters. And that's Duggan having a run himself there from dummy half in that oversized jumper number 20. Again, a sea of Hunter's defenders. And now Nayana Oldham. Another one making his Host Plus Cup debut this afternoon. Played for Manly at Jersey flag level. And there's a high one. Maria Maria. And try assist to his name in the opening 40. Hunters away deep out of their own end. Solo Wane 
for PNG Kumul. Experienced campaigner. Very quick in open space. Towards the middle of the Hunters. You heard what Coach Stanley Tepin had to say at the break. He, he thinks 80% completion rate from here should get the job done. In the ret jury, I absolutely agree with him. If they can aim towards that 80% completion rate, they will go a long way into winning this game. They, of course, have that 10-point deficit already. So if they can keep the ball in their hands and out of the Clydesdales, it's a big tick. The handling from both sides has been exceptional to start this game, hasn't it? So, some really good touches. Sorry, 10-point lead there instead of deficit. Oh, yeah. Get my words bundled up a little bit there, Drew. But yeah, they've really good handling so far from both sides. Looking very strong. The referee's blowing time off here. You can't lock him in with your elbow, mate, and then take him out. Just wait. No, 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 just wait. Just wait. Just wait. A little bit of fire right from Michael right. Capanias there. Right right. in his face. Well, what is... The referee's blown time off to caution him for milking a penalty, but at the same time's allowed the marker to waltz forward three metres. Goodness gracious me. <laughs> what was all that about? What was the purpose there? So here they go, the Clydesdales to Munger. Early ball for him. And the ball comes loose. Was that an attempted offload? The Hunters emerge with the football. Benji Cott, who scored a try in the opening 40 minutes. Well, we did mention getting early ball there. You see on the Macca's replay in the corner of your screen, he just ran himself you, out of room and didn't quite push through the contact. Pressure from the inside, jolting that ball loose. So, great work from the Hunters, just coming back on the inside and helping their mates. Capinius, five short of halfway, short side here by the Hunters. That's Kamati, who scored the opening try, and here's Tanabi. Quali meters by him, looking for a quick play, the ball, Benji Cott. And now through the hands, Kamati, due to Rimbu, a little kick over the top, but he went straight down the throat of Corrigan. Yeah, you're right, just had to open his gallet and just went straight down the gob, didn't it? Good field positioning from Corrigan to stay on top of that one. But the Hunters, another really good set, just running hard and chasing hard at the end of their sets as well they're settling in for the long haul here Up 14. He's 10. of course wet conditions it's the hunters uh, as you predicted taylor will at this point anyway seem to be handling the conditions better than their opponents there's an early kick from mcgrady outside the 40. can they get a good chase and a repeat set here no well Trapped by Murray Murray before any of that could occur, but dug in there to make the tackle. Six out from his own line, Maria. Now Wane. Again, dug in the tackle, this time helped by Mokaha. Now Nima. Three Clydesdales to bring him down. 14 points to four. The PNG Hunters lead the Western Clydesdales, and there's a penalty to the Hunters. And this is dangerous now for the Clydesdales. They cannot afford to concede the first try in the second half. Yeah, just a little bit disappointing there for the Clydesdales. It was a beautiful kick by Corey McGrady, the back end of their attacking set. They presented a nice straight defensive line and trapped Maria Maria within the 10 metres. But all of that work is undone with that penalty. Michelle V. Power, player to watch. From the PNG Hunters is their fullback Maria Maria. His first year with the Hunters on debut today. 2022 Digicel Cup Player of the Year. Maria Maria already with a try assist to his name. So the Hunters off the back of a penalty inside ball there to Cod. Twenty-one away here, the Hunters. Kamadi inside pass. 13 away. Three. Better, three. Played there by that was Tommy Moyday. And now looking for the little pass behind the back. Could turn out okay here for the Hunters. Brandon Nemer as the Clydesdales just all stood and watched. What's the referee going to rule here? It's try time. 
and Nima has a double. Sensational work here by the Papua New Guinea Hunters. They were making all sorts of inroads on this left-hand edge and through the middle. So Caius Kamadi playing the host and the little general here. Then they push over to the right-hand side, and it's a great run by Yakopa. Draws a couple of players in. And as we mentioned before, Nima just instinctually pushes on the inside, expecting the ball to be offloaded, which it is under pressure in traffic goes to the ground but neymar was still there to scoop it up and the hunters they played their safe game made a couple of big kicks big tackles and they find themselves again opening the scoring for the second half Julius Yakopa with the little flick pass leading to that try. Both Yakopa and Tanambi, their edge back rowers for the Hunters, have been superb. The points have come through Cotton Neymar, but it's the work on the inside. Straight over the black dot. Another successful conversion thanks to Containers for Change. Convert your containers into cash donations for your club. Visit containersforchange.com.au. Yeah, we have a look here at the Macca's replay and actually come off the hands of Cole Waka, which is why it hit the ground instead of floating straight into the chest of Neymar. But again, the Hunters proving themselves every time they get down this end of the football field, they score points, Drury. 20 points to four, the lead now out to 16. Sideline, Adam Jackson. Oh, maybe go back up to you, Drury, because they look as though they're on the attack. No, the Hunters subdued on the halfway mark. Uh, as they continue. Yeah, Nima's uh, experience down here on ground level. He's had a lot of talk behind the scenes as PNG turn over the ball here, a bit of push and shove. It's all happening, boys. Maybe I'll go back up to you now, Drury. Thank you. Yes, Molino, Fenay, Anganofo coming up with a big play. But then standing over his opponent and letting him know about it, and the Hunters were not happy. No, they weren't. They weren't happy. They all stick together. A band of brothers here, the Hunters. But if we just have a look here at the Macca's replay, what caused the big break originally, great hit up there by Tom Mwide. The ball ends up in the hands of Tanabe. And it was the shot by Mokaha up and underneath that jars the ball loose. Finning at, fin the boys there, Molino, getting involved with a bit of push and shove, adding a little bit of colour to the game, I think, Drury. Nothing wrong with that. A bit of passion. Spoken like a true front row forward, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. I, I, I do love to see when they mix it up there. And it, I think it just adds a nice little undertone for the rest of the game and the contacts, and we might see that fire. That was Fenay Anganofo on camera just then, the 16. And here's Kyle Waka. So kudos to Mokaha and Fenay Anganofo in that tackle defensively. And just those conditions where you don't want to force a pass like that. And now it's on in the middle of the field. It's Nayana Oldham going at it with a hunter on the ground. Now he gets to his feet. But We'll see what the referee rules here, but the Clydesdale's just pushing the pass. Probably not the conditions for it, Taylor Brown. No, and I thought that's exactly what might have happened if you stoke the bear. Sometimes you get the pause. And the Hunters brought that physicality that they've brought all game up to, to another level. So that if you want to go there, Clydesdale's, we can match up. And the firebrand style football has resulted in a bit of a push and shove on the ground. I'm going to say push and shove because I don't actually know if there were punches thrown. This time, talk to your players. We're not going down the line of push and shove after every decision or every incident. Yeah, I don't know if there was any punches, but you can see there. 
laying down the law here is Nick Pelgrave, isn't he? There's nothing in, in the initial one besides good contact from you guys. Yep. The 17 on this occasion has carried on with it on the ground. They will receive the penalty. I'll give you some time here. Talk to your players. Yep. We don't want to go down the line of foul play yep. or reacting to every incident for yep. the rest of this game. Yep. I'll give you some time. Thank you. So the penalty going to the Hunters, is it? Penalty to the Hunters. I thought Tanabi was the first one to react Fine. from the Hunters, but the referee didn't see it that way. You know, it does seem like that. It did seem like that on the Macca's replay. Tanabi reacted first, but the ball's going to go to the Hunters here. As I mentioned, this spicy little undertone that we've now got on the game, I think this... Uh, it's going to make a massive difference. See in the right-hand corner there, the Macca's replay. Yeah, it was Tanabi with the initial push. Oldham carries on with it on the ground, but Tanabi caused the original explosion. Well, the Hunters have got the Clyde Stiles well and truly on the rack here. Here's Tim. Front foot and hold. This is Tommy Moyday. In his first year with the Hunters. And now Capinius, who's been in the thick of things. Back from a stint with the Seagulls last year, winner Manly, that is, and now back with PNG. Brandon Nima, he's on a hat trick. Ball spills out, and Mariah Mariah. Bit a couple before Mokaha brought him down. Rimbu, and ch real chance here for the Hunters. They're lining up, and the ball hit the deck there from Benji Cott. Just the pass a little bit behind him. Yeah, fortunately for the Clydesdales that it was on the scrum line. because Benji Cott scrum had steamrolled line. himself into a nice little space here Clock's going. and he would have been Clock's proven a very hard line. man to stop for Tormunga and Finiang and Afo. So the Clydesdales really need to regroup here. You Still plenty of time on the clock of calling for the reinforcements of Shawnee. Hopefully bringing some energy and enthusiasm because they need it now, Drew. It looks like the rain just starting again. We'll certainly go to Adam. On the weather as it changes, it's uh, it's certainly been a wet day in Toowoomba for the majority of the day. The conditions are greasy out there. And there's been drop balls from both sides, really, but... Probably more from the Western Clydesdales, and there's another one. Just hamstringing themselves here, the Clydesdales. Putting more and more pressure on their backs now. And it's exactly what the Hunters said they were going to do at half-time. If they can keep their completion rates up, they believe they'll win this game of football. And it's proving true at the moment. We've already had a call for the scrum line. Thank Blake you. Blake Lenahan there. Second fine together. We'll take this opportunity to go down to Adam Jackson. Lock right in, Jada. Yeah, boys, the uh, Hunters just sensing they need a little bit of extra leadership uh, at the moment. So Ila Alu, their captain, the headgear lock. As you see, another mistake. His experience will be sorely needed. He's got the interchange card. It'll be interchange number four for PNG. And you'll notice too, Shonings back out there, the skipper for the Clydesdale. So Clydesdale's six interchanges at the moment. Hunters about to make their fourth. No, no, no. Just short of it. Yeah, unfortunately, just an error at the back of the scrum base here from Judah Rimbu. Just as the Hunters were sort of looking like they'd go on the attack and continue to heat this pressure on the Clydesdale's another get out of jail free card so here's that man Corrigan we've highlighted him he's gonna have to pull something out of the fire here for the Clydesdale's in their first game back and it appears Corrigan was captain while Shonig was off the field too as we just heard from Adam Shonig now back on the field and there he was playing it and this man also back on the field, Nafasa Malata Nasseri. Queensland A-grade player of the year last year. You'd be all over that, Taylor. Absolutely, he was. Here's Corrigan to Munga. And they had it unmarked. Fanay Anganofo on standing in the wing position, but the Hunter's got a hand to it. Middle, play the ball. Yeah, as we have a look here at the Macca's replay, it was a really good opportunity here. For the Clydesdales, no, Finayang and Afo 
unmarked on the edge and if he got that one would have had a fairly good opportunity to streak away from the 20 meter mark so the Clydesdales here the most dangerous when they put the ball through the hands to Tumunga on that edge. Well, I'd like to see him go high at the end of the set here if we make it that far, Taylor. They do have a significant height advantage with their wingers, the Clydesdales. I feel that they haven't exploited that to its fullest. Here goes Lenahan from dummy half. Offload away. And they end up losing ground. And there is one of those tall wingers in Mitch Watson. Can they hold the footy, the Clydesdales? I mean, error riddled, and there's another one. Commentators curse, Drury strikes again. But they're, they're, they're lucky here, the offside here from the Hunters. It's that man Malatoa in the series. You mentioned him before, Queensland A-grade player of the year. He's been a shining light for the winner Manly Juniors over the last couple of seasons. Playing on the edge and the lock position as well for them. Well, it's good to see him make the step up into the Host Plus Cup here for the Clydesdales and hopefully do so on a more regular basis. Second one. Referee's called time off here. We'll stay with the referee. So we've, we've had a couple of those in today's game right. where I feel that's almost deliberately going to ground after held. So when it's held, if, they just have to release it? Yes, correct, mate. And I'll give you the instruction. But if we have deliberate acts like what I felt that was in this area... You risk losing a player to the sin. Thank you, sir. Have Thank you. you. Just wait. You can well, take it back as far the as you want. Been laid down there, Drury. We may be seeing someone in the bin shortly if the tactics continue from the hunters. Help! Here's Lenahan. Let him go. She was you could see that ball was gonna spill out the way he's holding it. And you know what? I, I completely agree with the referee here, Taylor. Lenahan holding the ball like that, you're asking for trouble. The responsibility is always on the ball carrier to play the ball safely. And he's trying to exploit the fact that he was locked up by the hunters there. Let's start the bind. And take a quick play of the ball. But unfortunately, the responsibility is always on him to get the ball safely to the ground. And he did in that occasion. So great call by referee Nick Pilgrave. Well, it's just careless. Careless when his team desperately needs a try. Up now. And they had a wonderful oh. opportunity with a full set ahead. Unfortunately, it's been the storyline of this of this game here for the Clydesdales. Plenty of opportunity, but they've left it go begging through errors. Oh, there's another drop ball. So a chance for redemption here for the Western Clydesdales. I've seen a lot of drop ball, and I know the conditions play a part, Taylor, but Move now. You know, the grounds, they drain as well as they can these days. The footballs are designed in a way that makes it easier for players, and they've got to take some responsibility at some point for their own ball security as they face ball there to the big fella. Again, the Hunters muscling up in defence. So Melito and Nasiri with the play and very next they might have a try here the Clydesdales Todd White is over so the Clydesdales have scored through Todd White and a timely try at that yes it's the Clydesdales junior Todd White who kicks off the scoring opportunities in the second half for the men in the sky blue just a short ball on the line. I thought the Hunters have been exceptional today with that defence. And there was some really good contact made by Judah Rimbu and Ila Alu. But he managed to position his body in the perfect placement there, Todd White, to reach back over his right shoulder and plant that one down. Host Plus is a top performing industry super fund run only to benefit our members. An industry fund that puts you first? That's a plus. There is that man on screen, Todd White. Played Hastings during Colts for the Clydesdales. And those Clive Berghoff are very well. Chance here for Tomunga. 
to start to claw back the points and he does successful conversion hunters 20 Clydesdale's 10 can the home side come back and get it done you look back here on the Maccas replay there's a beautiful ball there from Tim's the young hooker and Todd White muscling his way over that's what they needed to do just stay straight keep it simple and push forward in these wet conditions so 20 points to 10 back to our half time margin but only 20 minutes remaining the Clydesdales can they build some momentum here get to a kick create some pressure Shonic the skippers back on there he is Toe in the series, the lock forward. It's been a real stop start game for the Clydesdales, hasn't it, Taylor? They just haven't been able to build that pressure. Yeah, I think they looked their best in the opening 20 minutes. Well, now I think that's a 40 20 attempt, but that opening 20 minutes when they had Malatoa in the series, and of course, Darren Shonig. You can throw in Todd White to that as well. Just running hard and straight up the middle and giving Drew Timms an opportunity to get a quick play the ball in front of him and scared out opportunities around the ruck. I think it's no surprise to see them get back on the scoreboard after those big men get back on the field and re-enter the competition. Great run there from Junior Rock. Yeah, Rock. One of the leaders in this forward pack, as is this Manila Alu for the Hunters. The last play here, they go high off the boot of Kamati. And Tamanga gets past the first tackle, links up with Corrigan. Well, let's see if the Western Clydesdales can get Corrigan more involved. Uh, this will help their cause. The great work from Corrigan. Again, it's a late footwork that's troubling the hunters and causing those issues. Jeez, that's a massive shiner on Matt Duggan's face. Really wearing the battle scars from that contact with Rop in the first half. But So after points, hopefully the Clydesdales continue on this path. 10 points in 15 minutes or 16 minutes odd is, is not that much at all. Could be in for a, uh, a cracker finish here. One try piece in this second half, and here goes that man again, Malatoa Naziri. Proof you can play host plus cup football with quality A grade performances. Lenahan, he's made a couple of errors. Can he hold on to it this time? Quick play the ball. Duggan shows it, finds he's locked forward again. Malatua Naziri since coming on is causing headaches for the Hunters from dummy half here. Tim's the never-ending tackle it seemed held up and that'll be changeover as the Hunters hang on. Well I think it's no surprise to see the successes of the Clydesdales in that last set as I mentioned earlier Malatua Naziri a couple of really good charges and just running hard and through the middle providing an opportunity for Tims and he almost gets over the line there Tims so that's the blueprint they see the success they need to continue down that path the hunters need to go back to what they were doing earlier moving the football around to their edges both back rowers have had great games so far getting a good kick away sideline Adam Jackson Yeah, boys, we highlighted before with uh, White being a born and bred local. That's one of the real benefits of the Clyde Sales coming back into the competition. We actually saw it in the curtain raise of the Melmaninga Cup in the under-18s. We saw a son of a gun in action. Their lock forward, Bud Smith, who is the son of former Maroons Kangaroos player, won a premiership with the Bulldogs, Jason Smith as well. So people say, hey, why are the Clydesdales back in the competition? Well, a great benefit is keeping local talent here in the Darling Downs region and giving them an opportunity to succeed at a high level like today. Yes, well said, Adam. Well said indeed. And just on Todd White, who scored that last try that Adam mentioned. Coach Alchin said during the week, he's one of those players where he'll do the same thing in the first minute that he does in the 79th minute. We'll go the full 80. Here's Shonik. 
They're starting to miss some tackles now, the Hunters. Hydesdale's with a little bit of momentum here. Lenahan, the pass from Duggan. Again, he just, I don't know about you, he makes me nervous he's going to lose the football each time he has it in these conditions, Lenahan. I thought he almost got stripped then. Here they come, back on the inside to Corrigan, the Clydesdales. And was that the last tackle? I think it was. They decided to run it. Not a bad option, but Hunters are up to the task. Yeah, I like the variety in attack from the Clydesdales. That outside inside ball to get Corrigan a little bit more involved using Waka down that edge, but the Hunters again, as you mentioned, up to the task, well aware of the dangers when Corrigan is floating in the middle of the park. So this reinvigoration of the Clydesdales in the last couple of minutes, you can put that down to hard running and getting the basics right. So 20 points to 10 inside the final 15 now. There is another game that's just started at KO Stadium. It's the Redcliffe Dolphins, your old team, Taylor, taking on the Brisbane Tigers. And it's Jack Bostock who's opened the scoring. The Dolphins leading 6-0 early on in that other game against the Brisbane Tigers. That'll be an absolute cracker of a match. Tigers taking on the Dolphins. I think they'll be right up there on the ladder this year, those two sides. Real reinvigoration for the Tigers. Another reinvigoration for the Seagulls as well. It didn't make the finals in 2022, but they had a great win over the Cutters, 44 to 6, to kick off the competition last night. That is the winner, Manly Seagulls, of course. Yes, the winner, Manly Seagulls. Sorry. But yeah, some great matches so far. We see here a little bit of trouble for Mokaha on the ground. Or is it just cramp? If it's just cramp, if you can get on yeah, side. It'll be a Clydesdale's feet really here, of course. Taylor Brown, for those who may not have heard your name, you uh, played in the 2016 Host Plus Cup Grand Final for the Dolphins. You and you. you're in the Premiership winning squad for the Dolphins in 2018. I'm lucky to miss out in that Grand Final. <laughs> yeah, no, I had a good couple of years. Thanks for pointing that out, Drury, that we lost in 2016 and all that sort of stuff. It's still... I said Grand Finalist. That's right. It's, <laughs> it still keeps me up at night, but that's okay. You keep picking at that scab. But, uh, <laughs> you know, some great seasons with the Dolphins. Well, they've given the ball away here. Well done there from Brandon Neymar. He got his hand in the way and it was ruled to have gone backwards. Hunter's footy. Yeah, time starting to slip away a little bit from the Clyde does they can't continue to hand the ball over like that it's all it's going to take is a really good attacking set and a try to the hunters and could just about be lights out there's a nice little tap on here the png side benji cod It's Mokahara who appears to be okay for the Clydesdales. Moraya, been impressed by him. Moraya Moraya has been outstanding today for the Hunters in his debut. I think he's going to be possibly up there for maybe a Rookie of the Year come awards night. Gee, that's a big call, Taylor. Well, I've just been really excited by the way he's played today. And if this is how he is on debut, you get a little bit more experience under that belt. And you can certainly see a star in the making there, Maria Maria. I like what I've seen. Now, what's this penalty? I wonder if it's against the ball carrier here. Or perhaps, no, it's going the way the Clyde stuff. Uh, well, of course, last year for the Hunters in the last few seasons, Terry Warpy at the back, mm. who's one of their best. Now, I, I didn't see that he's been mentioned as having left the club, Warpy. So, he, I'm not sure if he might be injured at the moment. He's still with the Hunters set up, but... Certainly, Murray and Murray with a chance to make that fullback full spot his own for the Hunters. He's been given the round one opportunity. And we see the Clydesdales here with another handling error. Some really strong contact in the tackle there by Tunnaby. Well, it, both sides are dropping ball, as we mentioned, Taylor, but the, the Clydesdales seem to be dropping twice as much football as the Hunters. The Hunters are hanging on to the ball and giving themselves a chance. Well, the disappointing thing, I guess, for the Clydes, though, they're not losing the ball often in contact. It's not a jarring collision that's causing the ball to come out. It's simple handling errors in the ruck, going to play the ball, losing it. Just 
really sort of basic things that they need to clear that up and fix it for next round because it's not going to cut the mustard here at host plus cup level and jason alchin would not be happy with the handling errors for the clydesdales they've still got 10 minutes to turn it around but the clock now well and truly a friend of the png hunters Move together. 20 points Lock to 10 they lead the hunters there's maria maria the young fullback Six little dummy there from Kamadi as they get another six with the set restart PNG. Tenza. Ah, Lou. 15 metres out from the Clydesdale's try line. Now Tenza to Kamadi. On the inside there was Sherwin Tanabi. One foot. Inside the 10. Outside. Tenza now feeding it again to Kamati via Mavoko. Maria. And then dropped by one eight. Where do you want the scrum? The ball there just floating a little bit lower than expected on one eight. But it was a really great back line movement. Maria Maria just pitching that one a little bit too low for one eight. Clydesdale's, of course, up to the task anyway. Saw Mitchell Watson up and in the face. So. Three in the One row, minute man. to go. We're starting to see some cramps. First game of the season, blowing out the cobwebs of what 80 minutes really feels like under game-like conditions. They're going to need to find some energy, the Clydesdales, if they want to try and get these two competition points on offer today. What do you want to see from them in this set? Two hands. Look, I'd like to see just some really hard running and holding on to the football. They've proven that when they do run hard and they find the angles in the middle of the field, they do get results. You know, the, the middle three for them has been great once they were all holding on to the ball and running hard and straight. So I'd like to see a couple of good touches and then look to go wide, but they need to earn the right first to go around the hunters by going through them. Shonig. Darren Shawnick, who's evolved into a real leader of young men, she's been given the captaincy. Of course, next week, next Sunday, on QPlus.tv, KO Freebies are nine now, as we see a 40-20 attempt there, just took a, a left bounce. And next week we take a trip to Bishop Park where the two-time defending champion North's Devils host the Redcliffe Dolphins in a grand final replay. You won't want to miss that one. Coverage live and free from 2pm and that's next Sunday. Yeah, I think that's going to be a really good game of football there, Drury, of course. The two-time defending champs, grand final rematch and, geez, that was a great game of football last year, wasn't it? Just edgy, edgy seat type yep. stuff, wasn't it? And really lived up to the grand final expectation everyone had, so... I think that will be a really good game. Of course, Braden McGrady moving over to the Dolphins and, of course, breaking the hearts of Dolphins late last year. So a couple of great stories that will be involved with that game. Indeed, he scored the match-winning try, did he not? He did. McGrady. He did. Popped his elbow out at the same that's, time, I believe. That's right. That's right. And just couldn't get there in time. Mitch Watson had a chance to take that one in the end goal. Didn't get his footing right. And knocked it back. And in the end, only a metre into play. And now he can't even stand up. Well, we've got another cramp there for Mitchell Watson. A couple of issues. Again, Taylor, I, I just don't think they've used Watson's height on the wing at all today, mm. the Clydesdales. And that was a distinct advantage for them. So I guess Jason Alchin will go back and watch the video replay of this game or, or probably have a fair idea right now before he goes in the sheds. There are a lot of things that they can take advantage of and a lot of strengths in their side that they need to be using if they want to have success. The ingredients are there. They just need to form it all together in the right way. Top white playing on the 30. Here's Duggan. And Maria Maria didn't quite judge the bouncing ball there. It'll He's run 10. Be retrieved by Solo Wane, who winds up, Come runs on, straight into Waka. And there's a knock on from the Hunters. So maybe a glimmer of hope here for the Clydesdales. Scooped up by, I think that's the skipper, is it? Shawnee. And he's had it stripped. No, not at all. That's right on held. It's. 
good opportunity here for the Clydesdales, as you mentioned, but having a look over there at the clock, five and a half minutes, I'll need to score pretty soon. Well, they have to score here. They've got to score in this set, or at the very least get a repeat set and score in the next set. Where's Corrigan? Keep an eye out for Corrigan here. Duggan linking up with Shonick, the skipper. Ten away. Now McGrady with Tamanga. Police! One foot! Oh! Messi Tamanga. Plays it. And that's a tricky one. Not another knock on, surely. Through the legs, I think, from Shonick. Here's Lenahan, little offload away now. Corrigan, but defense was in his face when he got the football. Looking for a quick play, the ball. Tims the and there's Duggan a little early kick it might hold up and Mariah Mariah was there but they will get the repeat set which isn't a bad result in normal circumstances but time is of the essence you'd have to say they can't afford another repeat set they've got to score in this next set don't they Taylor it needs to be points and it needs to be quick the Clydesdales plenty of these opportunities early in the match and it took all this time to be able to afford them a repeat set they get one here now, though, but you're right. Time is of the essence. Only four minutes on the clock. They need to score now. Great dropout, though. Mariah, Mariah, 55 on the fly, and here's White winding up. If you missed it earlier, Taylor Brown putting Mariah Mariah's hand up for a Rookie of the Year candidate. We see another penalty to the Clydesdales. Yeah, just the first contact was a little bit high, bumped off the shoulder into the chin. Of Todd White, you can see in the Macca's replay, bottom right hand corner. Just a little lazy left arm there from Josh Miray. So such a quick tap, Shonig. And now this is play number two. McGrady out the back, Corrigan cuts out to Munga, goes straight to the big fella there in Fene Anganofo. Looks like he's playing on the wing. Play when you can. Wait, go, tackle two. To Munga now, back to Corrigan at first receiver. McGrady, Duggan inside, and Todd White running over defenders, and good play the ball chance here, Timms finds Makaha met in a hard tackle, and it's play on isn't it, because it's gone backwards, everyone stopped, I'm not sure why the Clydesdale stopped, because they need to score a try, Timms cuts out McGrady, Makaha again, Fair play, it, it certainly went backwards, but you've got to play the whistle, Taylor, particularly if you've got to score two tries in less than five minutes. Corrigan with a little kick, ricocheted off a of hunter, not played at the call, and that'll be a changeover. Well, they didn't throw overly too much at them, what I thought they may there, Drury, but I cannot take away from the efforts of the hunters in defence. They have been very good all day, pressuring the halves. Play the ball. And using that physicality that was such a highlight in the first half there. Tanabi and Mokaha were a beautiful little battle there in the middle of the park they've had this afternoon. But it's the Papua New Guinean Hunters defence that's impressed me the most today. And that's what's earned them two competition points. Yeah, they've been wonderful today, the Hunters in defence. and. We spoke about the fact that there is that link to the national PNG team, and now they've got the coach as well. And they certainly have the Clydesdales beaten in camaraderie today. You can just see from their body language, the hunters, the way they get around each other, the way they're playing for each other, and in these conditions in particular, that's certainly helped their cause. Yeah, it has, and, and that's one thing that the Papua New Guinea hunters have always had. They've always had that brotherhood. They play for each other, and you can tell they spend a lot of time in actual training camp yeah, together not just catching up seconds. every second day second and playing one. football but right actually living together as they did during that COVID couple of years ball. where they had to relocate ball. to Australia so there's no doubt the brotherhood and the ties within the hunters helped them out every week on the field but particularly today in round one So the Clydesdales with Shonick, their skipper. All the way, all the way. Go, two. Tims, McGrady, Duggan. 
Early ball to Waka. Again, the ball comes loose. Hunters emerge with it. Julius Yakopa returning with the Hunters. He actually debuted in 2018 for PNG. Uh, Yakopa. Wait. Go, two. You can catch every game of every statewide competition this season Stand with a QPlus.tv subscription. Go, Head to the QRL website for further details. Wait. That's QPlus.tv as seconds go, continue four, to tick down here inside the final 30 seconds. Last! Give space! Mark is square! Run foot! Hold! Go! Not last! Kick. So last Clear play and middle. possibly the last play of the game. High, Corrigan was underneath it for the Clydesdales. Linking up with Tamanga. Tamanga is tackled. Well taken there by Junior Rock and also Siki Condon. There he gets out. That's Watson, who's back to his feet. Chip there from Corrigan, didn't go as planned. Final oh, seconds. Condon with a run. 10 metres, men. Run foot. Go, Sorry. two. 14, come 10. Yeah. And the Hunters. Stand up. Lock in and there we go. We've just had an adjustment with the That's clock right. now. So we're now inside the final 30 seconds. PNG looking to add to their tally. Offload away to Tenza. They keep it alive. Benji Cott. It's a little don't argue there on Tamanga. And the ball comes loose. Clydesdale's possession. With Corey McGrady. And there is the full time siren. So the PNG Hunters off to a dream start in their 2023 campaign. They're now undefeated in their last four Post Plus Cup games. 20 points to 10 winners over the Western Clydesdales in their return to host plus cup football. Yeah, they've played extremely good football here, the Papua New Guinea Hunters. They came here, they knew they were coming to a party, they knew they were coming to a celebration of all things Western Clydesdales. And they showed up with the attitude to spoil that party, and indeed they did. Some strong performances throughout the whole 1 to 17. Some really strong defensive efforts. Some impressive skill and attack to score some of those tries. And the Hunters are well-deserved winners today at Clive Berghofer Stadium. Yes, well done to the PNG Hunters. 20 points to 10 winners over the Western Clydesdales. A double to Brandon Nima. Tries also to Benji Cotton, Kamadi, Jamie Mavoko with the two conversions for the Clydesdales. Bessie Tamunga and Todd White, the try scorers, and Tamunga one from two with the boot 20 points to 10 png hunters winners in their round one matchup against the western clydesdales as we take a look now at the full-time highlights well, here are the 4x match highlights and the maccas replay Young 5'8", Sakaius Kamadi. He was outstanding to bat today on debut for the Hunters. Was the player of the year in 2022 in the Digicel Cup. Also, Maria Maria, Great offload here to Benji Cott. He got his try on that right edge. And this was the first of Brandon Neymar's two tries. Just coming off the right hand of Julius Jacopa. Beautiful no-look offload here. And Brandon Neymar jogging on the spot, expecting it gets a try. We thought we might see a Clydesdale's comeback after this try. Just to wrap up the first half, Bessie Tormunga getting the first try for the Clydesdales in 2023. The first points for the Clydesdales since 2006. But then it was all Papua New Guinea Hunters. A great second try here from Brandon Neymar, who was jogging on the spot for another Yakoba offload. Todd White 
breathed a little bit of life back into the home team when he wriggled his way over and managed to score a try. But it was all Hunters today. Great try, great couple of tries, great highlights, and a great win. Yeah, the Hunters, 20 points to 10 winners over the Western Clydesdales. Here is Adam Jackson with our Hastings Deering player of the match. Yeah, it goes to Moray. Moray, the fleet-footed fullback. First taste today of Host Plus Cup action. What was that experience like for you? Um, yeah, it was uh, unreal. Uh, my first time. A, a bit scrappy, but uh, it's uh, it's good to get the win on, on debut, and yeah, I'm happy about it. And they've been telling us how well you played Digicel Cup last year. How does this comp uh, differ? How is it different? Yeah, um, uh, Digicel Cup is uh, more a uh, bit uh, brutal. Uh, compared to this one, it's a bit uh, okay, but uh, it's more technical, and uh, it's, it's really fast. So, yeah, it's good to uh, get it going. Yep. And this season, Hunters will get to play games back up in PNG. How much does that mean to the people up there? Oh, it, it, it means a lot. Uh, we love rugby. Rugby league, uh, it's our national sport. And uh, two years uh, away from home and uh, getting back to uh, home, it's, it's, uh, it's unreal, mate. Well, thanks for your time. I'll bring in uh, Rowan here from Hastings Steering, the local representative here in the Toowoomba region, presenting the fullback for the Hunters with the player of the match. Can't wait to see plenty more of him in the Host Plus Cup. Yes, congratulations to Mariah. Mariah deserving and uh, certainly a breath of fresh air. Uh, we wish him all the best for his Host Plus Cup career and his future rugby league career. And as we head into the break, here is your play of the day, brought to you by Super Cheap Auto. Yeah, and of course, it is this try here, the Super Cheap Auto play of the day. It's Brandon Neymar's first of the afternoon. His first again off the hands of Yakopa. Great vision here by Judah Rimbu. He knew there was an opportunity. Cuts out to Yakopa, right hand, flick pass. And weren't they ecstatic about that? It was a great try, plenty of skill, and really resembling of the Pup New Guinea's day. And that was today's play of the day, brought to you by Super Cheap Auto. Make it super with Super Cheap Auto. We'll be back after a short break with the Forex post-match wrap.